Hello everyone, I'm very glad to share our work with you on itinerary aware personalized deep matching at Flicky. This presentation includes five parts, motivation, related work, fitness model, experiment, and conclusion. Let's start with motivation. Firstly, I'd like to introduce Flicky to you. Flicky is one of the most popular online travel platforms in China and provides travel-related items such as air ticket, hotel, package tour, and so on. By now, Flicky has served tens of millions of online customers. Flicky's personalized algorithm team is committed to providing personalized recommendation service for online customers. Different from other e-commerce platforms, OTPs face three major challenges, sparsity, diversity, and implicitness. Compared with other e-commerce platforms, for example, Taobao in China, users' behavior collected at OTPs are more sparse because travel is usually an infrequent need for users. As shown in this table, when a user plans to travel, the user may have cross-domain diverse needs, including buying air ticket and train ticket, choosing a package tour, and so on. According to statistics reported by Flicky from August 10th to September 10th of 2020, over 53% users create more than one order for travel, and 16% of users even have more than two orders. The reported results revealed that the user's travel intention, which is of importance in matching items for the user, is generally implicitly delivered by multiple orders rather than a single order. For example, this table displays a user's orders created by at Flicky for travel. By considering those orders as a whole, we can accurately infer the user's travel intention of the third order is for sightseeing, while the intention of the remaining orders is for transfer. Under such circumstances, vacation items of landing, i.e. the transit city, should not be presented to the user. In this work, we focus on the above challenges in the matching phase of OTPs and address the above challenges through the creation of a novel Flicky itinerary aware deep matching network called Fitnet. Before introducing Fitnet formally, let's briefly introduce some existing work. In these slides, we show three representative works in deep matching. In YouTube DNN, items and users are mapped to vectors via embedding layers and feedforward neural network. At serving time, YouTube DNN computes the most likely cake videos and presents them to the user. To alle alleviate the sparsity and co-star problems, side information is incorporated into the graph embedding framework. A one recent work proposed two aggregation methods to integrate the embeddings of items and corresponding site information. Multi-interest network with dynamic routing or MIND was proposed to deal with users' diverse interests in the matching stage. In MIND, a multi-interest extractor layer based on capsule routing mechanism is designed, which is applicable for classing users' historical behaviors and extracting users' diverse interests. We refer the users to we refer the reader to this paper for a more comprehensive review of the existing literature. Although previous deep matching methods provide many good ideas in improving the matching phase, these works cannot well address the challenges faced by online travel applications, namely sparsity, diversity, and implicitness. In this work, we consider these challenges by introducing the concept of itinerary and carefully design a series of effective attention mechanisms by being aware of the information of user itinerary. In the following, we present the design of our Fitnet model. This slide shows the architecture of Fitnet, which includes three different attention modules. The first attention module is modeling user's travel intention and to better understand user's travel intentions on the premise of knowing their basic profiles. For example, 
If a user's home city is Hangzhou, while the user's destination city in the unconsumed order of his or her itinerary is also Hangzhou, then Finnet can infer the user's travel intention as visiting relatives and thus do not recommend local vacation items in Hangzhou to the user. The scale dot product attention is applied to the embedding vectors of users' basic profiles and uses itineraries. The calculation is shown in equation 4 and the binary cross entropy loss function is shown in equation 9. The second attention module is modeling user's itinerary. We know that a single unconsumed order of a user cannot accurately describe the user's preference for itinerary, such as the preference for the destination city or for the item category. Hence, a multi-head self-attention mechanism is employed in FitNet to capture the self-interactions among embedding vectors of unconsumed orders. The calculation is shown in equation 5 and 6. The third attention module is modeling users' diversity needs. As mentioned above, the travel needs of users are diverse. When the user plans a travel, the user may have cross-domain diverse needs, including buying air ticket, booking hotel, calling taxi service, choosing the package tour, and so on. The diversity of a user's needs must be considered in recommendation process and can be modeled from user's behavior sequence and target item. To filter out the negative impact brought by casual interactions on the acquirement of users' diverse needs, as illustrated in this figure, FitNet adopts another scale dot product attention mechanism to emphasize more important interacted items in the user's behavior sequence, according to the user's itinerary information. The calculation is shown in equation 7, and the binary cross entropy loss function is shown in equation 10. Next, we will show our experimental results. The statistics of Flicky production dataset is shown in this table. The dataset is extracted from mobile Flicky app, contains one month's users' logs at Flicky collected in April 2020. In the dataset, impression and click samples are labeled as positive samples. On the premise that the number of positive samples is constant, we test the impact of different settings for the amount of negative samples on the performance of Finnet in the following experimental results. It is well known that defining negative samples for the matching phase in the recommendation system is a non-trivial problem for the quality of selected negative samples has great impact on the performance of a recommendation module. In light of this, before we make the comparison of all me methods, we conduct an experiment to evaluate the influence of different settings to negative samples on Finnet. In particular, we verify three settings of negative samples. Setting 1. For each positive sample, we randomly sample items from the item pool as negative samples. The experimental results is shown in this table. The setting 2, we ensure that the category of 50% of negative samples are the same as that of their corresponding positive samples, and the categories of the remaining 50% negative samples are different from that of their corresponding positive samples. The experimental results is shown in this table. The setting 3, we make sure that only 10% negative samples have the same categories as that of their corresponding positive samples, and 90% of negative samples have different categories compared with that of their corresponding positive samples. The experimental results is shown in this table. We can conclude that, first, Finnet achieves significantly better performance under the setting 2 and 3. This is because there is no restriction on the destination city of negatives in setting 1, and as a result, a good many of samples whose destination city is irrelevant to the user's itinerary are selected as the negatives. This indicates that confining the destination city of negative samples to that of the user's itinerary is of vital importance in training a 
travel related matching model. Two, the amount of negative samples has apparent impact on the hit rate and the precision of feednet. In specific, with the increase of negative samples, two metrics are improved at birth, since the increase of negative samples enhances the generalization ability of the child of the trend model in differentiating between positives and negatives. However, when the ratio of negative samples across 10 and 11, there's no obvious additional gain over the Finland model. Therefore, 1 versus 10 is applied as the fixed setting to the amount of negative samples in the following experiments. To evaluate the effectiveness of the proposed three itinerary aware attention mechanism in the FinNet model, we conducted an ablation study by comparing FinNet with its three variants, named as VAR1, VAR2, and VAR3. VAR1 removes the first attention module, VAR2 removes the second attention module, and VAR3 removes the third attention module. Experimental results of the ablation study are listed in this table, and more detailed analysis can be seen in this paper. Results on the offline dataset of different state-of-the-art are shown in this on these slides. It is worth noting that Finnet makes an, on average, 5.2% increase in hit rate and on average 9.1% improvement in precision compared with the next best method, MIND. We also conduct online experiments by developing, by deploying Finnet to handle real traffic in the personalized interfaces of mobile flicky app. It is clear that Finnet outperforms other recommendation methods, which indicate that Finnet generates better representations for users by taking their itinerary information into account. Finally, we make a conclusion and outlook for the future work. In this paper, we introduce a concept of itinerary and present a novel flaky itinerary aware deep matching network. Offline and online experiments are conducted to verify the effectiveness of Finnet. In the future, we will try to improve the proposed model to handle more complex scenarios in which a user may own more than one itineraries. Thank you. If you have any questions, you can contact me through the emails.